We have here the Queen of Wands, and I love this deck because of the imagery, the animals. So we have here the Queen of Wands. Look at her eyes. She is stone cold. And you know the, the traditional Rider Waite depiction of the Queen of Wands. She's got the sunflower and the black cat. She's very loving, very... Um, She's, she's very, like, spontaneous. She's very attractive. She's very, like, bold. In this context, it's almost like the Ice Queen, okay? It's almost somebody who's like, I'm not joking around. It's somebody who can stare at you, and they put you in your place, okay? So I feel like your energy is very pure and raw and uh, domineering, but not in a, a bad way, commanding attention, as well as bold and fierce, okay? So this is a, the way that you're coming across for this month. And somebody is seeing this, seeing you for the very first time, and seeing this situation, you embodying your power. And they're seeing this because something has been woken up in them, okay? Um, going back to the other message, you know, I was broken and now I'm fixed. I feel that message pertains to, for many of you, there was a situation here that had you in a bind, okay? You didn't know how to go forward or backward. Two of swords, indecisiveness. Look at that piece of gunk that's tying the swords together. It's like one decision rests upon another decision. The swords are about decisions or about mental processes or about communication. There might have been a standstill when it comes to communication. There might have been emotional blockages between you and another person. There might have been a stalemate, okay? There might have been like a icky, sticky, um, difficult situation. And what it does is that it creates a lot of binds, a lot of uh, misgivings, I I'm hearing. A lot of like, um, you know, the, the swords are sharp, right? And those are ribbons that bundle of ribbon keeping it in place the swords can easily cut through the, these ribbons but i feel like it's a situation where the situation it's a situation where the problem was very very minuscule it, it was very small but it was very important and because it's so important you felt like you might not have had all the information. You felt like one decision rests upon another decision. And so you couldn't, you, you felt like you couldn't act. You felt like you didn't have all the knowledge. You felt like you didn't have all the information. You felt like it was better left alone than, you know, sever the ties, okay? So I feel like you were dealing with somebody that you might have had a very strong emotional connection to. And you might have wanted things a certain way. And I do feel there is an element of two people butting heads. Okay, stubbornness, uh, ego, pride. And I feel like it's coming out from both sides. And then I also feel like there was, if this is like a connection, it might not have been a very healthy or a very good connection to be in. And um, I'm sensing this is the month November, where you break free, Seven of Swords, okay? That big sword coming through to splice through all the little swords, all the thoughts, all the mental processes, all the, the little pieces and scraps of information that at the end of the day, they don't really matter. All these small swords don't really matter comparatively because some big news is coming into the, the picture to clear up that fog of confusion, okay? Looking at a situation through a pair of new eyes, being able to see it exactly for what it is, being able to understand that these things don't really matter. These things are on the periphery. They don't have any bearing on the decisions that I need to make right now. They're minuscule compared to this other big decision that I have to make. And a lot of the times, too, we, we come into, you know, massive, like, awakening, realization, um, mainly because we see things in context, right? We, we think about, for example... And um, you guys are very big picture oriented, okay? You like to see see the whole rather than all the interrelated parts. 
And people might blame you guys for not being very detailed, being a little bit careless, being a little bit like, um, uh, you know, not dotting your I's and crossing your T's. And you might like just rush through to get something done and out of your way. And you're not very careful with the little details. And, and, and I feel like that's generally true for a lot of uh, Sagittarius people. And you are aware of this about yourself too. The tendency to rush things and the tendency towards carelessness. And I feel like, you know, the part of, uh, about growing up, you have actively tried to mitigate the, your weaknesses. Okay. You have tried to be a little bit more patient. You have tried to, uh, cross your T's and dot your I's. You have tried to take that extra few seconds to look over your work and to review everything that you're doing. But what I'm seeing here is a situation where you're starting to see things in context. So for example, this is just a, a very very minor example okay you're going through your day and you're thinking like you know what am I going to eat for lunch I'm hungry what am I going to eat for lunch and then by the time dinner uh, rolls around you're just like what am I going to eat for dinner these are very very small decisions right and then the next day you're at work and you know You've got like a, a fire to put out over here. Somebody over here needs you. And so you're going through your day battling fires, putting out fires, setting things right, uh, helping people, troubleshooting. And then before you know it, lunchtime comes and goes. And then, you know, um, five o'clock rolls around. It's the end of the business day. And you're just like, wow, that was a very productive day. It's because you're making these bigger, more important decisions and you're not mulling over the little side segue uh, peripheral things that in the greater scheme of things don't really matter. And that's what I mean by a pair of new eyes, okay? Looking at a situation and being able to prioritize, being able to toss out the decisions, the thoughts, the, the things that don't really matter. Um, I'm seeing for many of you, you're seeing people and you're, 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 Sagittarius people are very open minded, but I feel like in some ways you have a fixed opinion about a person, a situation, a thing, and you have stuck to that fixed opinion. And now I feel like you're assessing or, or looking at a situation and in its entirety, you're just like, I thought this person was this way, but now they've proven themselves to be this way. And I like what I see. So I'm going to, you know, trash the preconceived notions or my previous ideas or my pre previous thoughts of this person. And I'm going to treat them as this new person that, that has emerged. Okay. So you're very much about allowing others to reinvent themselves you're very much about giving people second chances you're very much about um you know i'll see it i'll believe it when i see it okay so there's definitely a lot of like changing of minds changing of hearts um for the better i feel being definitely more flexible more open-minded and i feel like not only is this um change in your own awareness it, it's helping you start to see a lot more optimism in a person, in a situation, okay? So I feel like it's a very, very much needed good change that's coming into the picture for many of you. And then I'm also seeing as well, there is a person here um, that you're kind of like waving goodbye to, okay? There is a situation. Emotionally, it was very, very messy, Okay. Emotionally, you were very invested in it. Um, you were butting heads with the other person. We have the moon in the back, which is, you know, sheer emotion. And you had an emotional response every time this person deals with you. They know how to trigger you. They do a lot of things that, um, if anybody else did it, it would be fine. You know, for example, leaving the toilet seat up. For example, not washing their dishes after they're, they used a, a dish. Anybody else can do it. And it, you, it wouldn't irk you, okay? It, it wouldn't like cause a visceral reaction within you. But for whatever reason, when this person does it, it triggers something within you. And so I feel like there is a, a, a very complex emotional situation that I feel like you're triggered, you're easily triggered with this person. 
and you don't understand yourself why you're triggered and you don't understand why it's becoming such a problem i feel like there's going to be a lot of clarity coming into the month of november where you're going to start to kind of like take a step back re-examine the situation loose loosen the, the the grip on this situation will allow it to kind of like naturally fall out you know if we unravel that that bundle of ribbon the two swords will loosen up and they will naturally fall out okay so what i'm seeing here is um there's a person that you've been dealing with and um i feel almost like once again I was broken and now I'm fixed okay this person has been through their fair share of tribulations in life they have not had an easy you know upbringing they've had to scramble they've had to deal with you know the 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 worst things that a child have had to deal with okay like abandonment issues uh, living in a place of lack okay lack of food lack of uh, shelter lack of stability um, lack of security so this was somebody who has had like an emotional roller coaster of a childhood this is somebody who has um, you know um, had it all and then had it taken away so they've dealt with a lot of emotional ups and downs a lot of financial ups and downs in their life and they're they're constantly used to you know hoarding for example mainly because they have dealt with scarcity and scarcity triggers anxiety in them so when they have things they can tend to be um, you know like a little bit more on the selfish end hoarding things hogging things for themselves and I feel like you've never understood this person you you've never been able to you know explain their behavior and you've never been able to sympathize and I feel like there is a major breakthrough when it comes to understanding for this month and I I don't know if like you're put in a situation where you're 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 starting to see things from their perspective but I feel like you're looking at this situation in a brand new light you're less critical you're you're more receptive to what they have to say you're easing up your energy and you're definitely you know be you're able to see them in a a different light okay through a different lens through a different framework to be able to completely understand and unravel whatever this person uh, is like they might have been an enigma to you you might have a lot of trouble understanding them you're starting to unravel and you're starting to understand so there is huge awakening huge awareness coming into the picture um, the other word or the other phrase actually that came out when I was shuffling is um, boiling a frog okay and that's an analogy so let me just give you the context of the story okay so it's a situation where uh, you want to cook a frog right or you want to um, I'm just going to explain it the in the most straightforward way that I can um, you put the frog in the pot right and the water in that pot is like room temperature and the frog stays there if you throw the frog in and it's boiling temperature the frog is going to notice and it's going to hop out so you start it with room temperature and then you you know put it the the pot over a fire and then slowly 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 the water you know rises in temperature and then before you know it the the pot boils over and the frog is cooked and so basically what it means is it's a situation where when there are very very small minute changes that are implemented or that are added on over a long period of time we don't notice these changes we we see the situation as bearable so we stay in it and we stick around mainly because you know we think like oh the changes aren't that bad they're they're very gradual they're very small minute changes over large periods of time it's not as bad as like 
changes happening in succession, one after another in a very short period of time, that can feel very destabilizing. But if it's stretched out, then we barely feel it. So I feel like there's a situation here where there are a lot of changes happening in your environment, okay? And these changes are signaling to you some type of a shakeup, some type of a situation where you're going to have to decide, you know, are you okay with this kind of like uh, emotional roller coaster fluctuations, changes in priority, changes in the dynamics day in and day out? Okay, because I feel like the changes are very, very jarring, are very apparent in the month of November. By the way, in November, a whole month of November is a Mercury retrograde period. Okay, so that starts on, I believe, the very last day of October, October 31st on Halloween. And it's going to continue through the majority of the uh, November time frame. And Mercury retrograde periods for you guys is... All of these small, tiny, minor, little changes that have been happening to you from the beginning of this year until now have been very small, stretched out over lar long periods of time. But for this month, everything is reduced within one month where you have like fluctuations, unpredictability. Everything is just, you know, one after another. Um, I, I feel like compressed into, you know, a very short um, month of November. And so you're kind of like, this is being brought to your attention because it's telling you, look at it, you know, before it was small and minor and you were okay with it. But now the same thing has happened and it's like basically the same thing, but you're noticing it now only because the, the the time, the delay within the change is so short. Are you still okay with this? Are you still w willing to put up with this? Why was it acceptable before, but not acceptable now? Mercury retrograde periods are times where things that we have swept under the rug kind of like come to the surface. Problems that we thought weren't that big, weren't that problematic, weren't that, you know, weren't deal breakers, become deal breakers in Mercury retrograde periods because it's forcing us, and I feel greatly with this spread, examining your values, okay? We have here the Six of Pentacles, weighing out the pros and cons, literally weighing out, is it worth it? Is it efficient? Is it worthwhile? Is it a deal breaker? Is it balanced? Is it reciprocal? And is it fair? So I feel like all of these are key words regarding a situation that will be coming into the picture. And we have, interestingly enough, the Six of Swords. This is kind of like the, the, the freeing yourself, okay? Cutting off the ribbons. The Six of Swords is uh, sailing away from a troublesome situation, okay? You're saying goodbye to this stalemate, this conflict, Queen of Cups, you know, this is like waving away, waving goodbye, sailing off, pushing yourself into the water, trying to experience something else, and getting out of the stalemate. And you're happily doing it, mainly because you want to move on to something that is a lot more balanced, a lot more reciprocal, a lot more worthwhile. And I feel like, once again, it's, it's a situation where we start to see the solutions to all these problems. We start to see what is really important to us. We start to see kind of like that boiling the frog. We start to see a situation where something might have, um, it's almost like the bath water has gone cold. Or, you know, the, we're seeing things through a new pair of eyes. And so it's not all fun and games anymore, or it's not all glamorous and novel anymore. We're looking for something a lot more stable, a lot more serious, a lot more pragmatic, and a lot more long lasting. And on either side of this, we have here Six of Pentacles, reciprocity, okay? I take this bundle, you take that bundle, and everything is fair. And on either side of that, we have you, the Queen of Wands, 
and possibly, you know, whoever you're dealing with, the King of Wands. This is a match. This is a perfect supreme match. And what we see here right in the middle is, you know, that balance, the give and take, the situation where somebody is no longer taking you for granted, where somebody is like definitely made aware that I need to step up, that the Sagittarius has really, um, you know, come into their own. The Sagittarius has proven themselves. The Sagittarius is not playing anymore. The Sagittarius is making demands now. And so I feel almost like, you know, compromise, apology, not taking a situation for granted, coming into terms that, you know, it takes two to tangle, okay? It's not just about what you said the other day that upset me. It's more about, hey, we both contributed to the situation, Let's just focus on the solution for right now. So I definitely see a recalibrating, a rebalancing, and a, I almost want to say, like, viewing a situation uh, for for what it really is, okay? For, for like, its importance in your life. And, like, um, vice versa, I, f I do sense that somebody is definitely very, very aware of the impact that you have made, okay? In the past, they might not have understood you, and I feel like, specifically, this is a um, a romantic partner. In the past, they might have underestimated you. They might have not have seen you for your sharp eyes, your ability to, you know, problem solve, your ability to be very decisive. They might not have seen these things about you. And for the very first time, their eyes are being made wide open where they're starting to see how meticulous you are. And they're starting to see that maybe they're the sloppy one in the relationship. Maybe they're the ones that have not been whole, pulling their weight. Maybe their crown is on crooked. So in the meantime, you know, they might have been judging you. They might have been underestimating you. They might have been looking at you and not seeing how regal you are. And now they're being made aware that, you know, I was looking at the situation from a wrong perspective. I was looking at this situation in the wrong way, through a wrong lens. 